We hope to be showing you right there scenes from The Price of Honor, a documentary released last September that uh, told the story of two American girls, Amina and Sarah Saeed. Uh, those two teenage girls, uh, sisters from Louisville, Texas, were killed in a premeditated honor killing in 2008 by their own father, Yasir Saeed. Saeed fled that crime scene and he remains on the FBI's most wanted list to this day. The number of honor killings in the United States is not officially tracked, but based on reports, it is a growing problem and one that's getting more attention both here and around the world. Joining us now, a woman very familiar with honor violence, and she is a survivor of a forced marriage. She's here in the United States to ask for help to put an end to the violence against women and girls. She's women's rights activist and the founder of Karma Nirvana, a UK-based helpline. Her name is Jasvinder Sangara. She joins us from Newsmax New York and again from Newsmax Washington, former Congressman Michael Patrick Flanagan. Uh, Jasvinder, we thank you for your time. And as we understand thank it, you. since 2008, there have been at least five reported honor killings in the U.S. Can you briefly explain for those who may not understand what an honor killing involves, could you give us the definition cross-culturally? I will do my best. Um, basically, these are uh, American subjects who are born here in America, as in Britain. Um, we have British subjects who are born there and they are within a family dynamic that operates what we call an honor system. They are taught that they have the power to dishonor and shame their family just by being normal adolescent teenagers in Britain, same here in America. So just for going out with their friends, dating, talking to a boy, wearing makeup, all these behaviors that are very normal are very often deemed shameful by their family. And if they understand that if they do them, they put themselves at risk. And what we know, the families will perceive those behaviors as shameful and then they will significantly harm them to put them back on track or even as we know in the extreme, kill them. If we look at Amina and we look at Sarah Saheed, the father believed that they, as normal teenagers in America, were behaving too American and he killed them for being too westernized. This is a tragic and horrible thing uh, that we have only beginning to come grips with. Um, I lived in Iraq for a couple of years and in much of the Middle East this is fairly prevalent behavior and it's accepted largely mm -hmm. and widely mm -hmm. by the people. They don't embrace it but they understand that it happens and in many places it's excused. And perhaps you can explain mm -hmm. for us that, that mentality. Yeah, the, the, the sad fact is that where this is happening within communities and many communities, not just South Asian, Afghan, Kurdish, Iranian communities where this is happening, the communities know about this and sadly they turn a blind eye. We do not hear people reporting within those communities. In fact, they collude within those communities. So when you see a murder happening, and in Britain there are at least 12 a year, what happens in that community is a deadly silence and also sadly when our victims are reporting they are misunderstood. People cannot comprehend that you could actually be killed for being seen talking to a boy and we have those cases, they are real life cases. So there is a real issue here with respect to the professionals, especially the police, whereby their own awareness and understanding needs to be increased if we are going to get past the wall of silence the communities bring up when these murders happen. Ches Vinder, we have a clip from the Honor Diaries documentary. Uh, you, of course, took part mm -hmm. in that documentary. Let's, let's take yeah. a listen to some of the, the comments in this clip. The concept of honor, it's very difficult to explain it to Western societies. Honor is something that is carried and contained in women and is there to be guarded by men. Women who are Anything from wearing short sleeves, refusing to wear a headscarf, being seen talking to a man, those things can be deemed dishonorable. When you do dissent with what is portrayed as mainstream belief, you are ostracized. There are threats of murder, there are threats of rape, physical mutilation. Chaz Vinder, uh, obviously you've been very involved in combating this type of violence. 
Uh, but I'm mm -hmm. curious, has the scourge of political correctness paralyzed people in the UK and here in the US? Oh, without a doubt. You see, um, the mentality exists whereby there is a culture of not wanting to offend communities, having to be culturally sensitive, not wanting to be called a racist. And that mentality is preventing victims from accessing support. Even if we look at the film Honor Diaries, which needs to be out there and screened everywhere, we are having opposition to the film being screened, generating this debate, because we are speaking truth. We're making people feel uncomfortable. Let me tell you, it is not part of my culture to be abused. In Britain, in one school, we had over a hundred girls go missing from an education role, deemed at risk of forced marriage and honor-based abuse. They were South Asian girls aged 15 to 16. Nobody asked where they had gone because the attitude was, it's what they do, isn't it? We don't want to rot the boat. And yet, if a hundred white British females went missing off a school role, Britain would have been jumping up and down. That mentality exists here, and while we think like that, we are colluding with the perpetrators and we are giving them greater power. Jasvinder, you've come to the United States to ask President Obama for help in ending honor violence. Are you concerned the same politically correct attitude you've seen in the UK still prevails here in the United States? I, I've been here just for a week. I have been backwards and forwards. This attitude in terms of political correctness and this moral blindness that people have certainly exists. I've already seen it while I've been here. Our Prime Minister in the UK has made forced marriage a criminal offence. We have now mandated every police force in the UK to be trained in this. And we are inspecting all police forces at the moment. That leadership from our Prime Minister is extremely important. And what we are urging the President to do in the United States is to demonstrate the same leadership because what he has to acknowledge is this is happening in America and leadership is going to help us to tackle this and reach the most isolated. Jasvinder Sangara, we'll have to leave it right there. Our thanks to you and to Michael Thank Patrick you. Flanagan checking in from Newsmax Washington. Now it's time for a national weather update. Hey there, how's it going? I'm Jessica Reyes with your weather from coast to coast. We'll kick things off across the southwestern portion of the country where we're dealing with a high fire danger. Meanwhile, moving along into parts of San Antonio for today, into parts of Texas, we're dealing with a flash flooding, the threat of severe thunderstorms, so keeping a close eye on all of that. And speaking of flooding, a lot of that by the Gulf of Mexico, New Orleans in the eye of all of that, and so is Pensacola across northern portions of the state of Florida. Into central Florida for today, we may see some showers, but not so much the further south you go. If you're across or if you're in Miami for today you're dealing with some nice beach like conditions across the northeast for today high pressure dominates with that said lots of sun for us across the east into the nation's capital partly sunny and into Boston mainly sunny great for an outdoor lunch here are some of your daytime highs <music> And our thanks to Jessica Reyes as you get the forecast for your daily routine now listen because we've been part of your daily routine, look, pay attention. An important announcement. Next week, America's Forum will start airing at 11 a.m. Eastern. It's next week only, so make a note. Tune in then if you're out west, that'll be 8 a.m. Some other big schedule changes on the way. They're exciting. We'll tell you about them in the not too distant future. For now, stay tuned.